is Russ Vogt, former Office of Management and Budget Director and the president of the Center for Renewing America. Russ, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. So here we have more of these companies signing up to uh, essentially tell people how they should be thinking as well as selling them products. What are we going to do about this? Yeah, I mean, I think that increasingly we're going to have to take a look at the benefits that they get under federal policy, under state policy, under local policy, and remove those benefits. Uh, increasingly, they are the, the accountability arms, the scorekeepers, the enforcement uh, agents of the Democratic Party and the cultural left. And to the extent that they are, their benefits under law in this country need to change. Yeah, because boycotts, people calling for boycotts. President Trump was calling for a boycott, you know, Coca-Cola. And, but, 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 you know, I see Pepsi-Cola, for example, were in on this, uh, this sort of woke high commission call that took place over the weekend. So you've got limited choice, haven't you, really? And it's pretty unreasonable to expect consumers, even if they're really outraged by this, to forego the products that these companies provide. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's not clear that you have too much of a choice when you choose from one product to another. I'm never going to argue that someone should not boycott a product that they think is morally offensive. But I think that the response from conservatives needs to be wider and deeper, and it needs to go to the, the policy levers that are at our disposal. That's one of the reasons I was so excited to see what the Georgia state legislature did in passing a bill to remove the tax benefit for Delta. I liked seeing what senators were calling for in removing the antitrust exemption for Major League Baseball. It's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis, but that's the kind of creative thinking that's necessary and the, the recognition to the left and these corporations that they will not get a, 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 an easy conversation when they come into the offices of these members. The other thing, Russ, is that these companies are supposed to, um, in the end, they're supposed to operate on behalf of the interests of their shareholders. I, I don't think there's any evidence that any of these companies have uh, consulted their shareholders about this, about whether they want them getting involved in politics in this way with all of the risks that that involves. No, I don't think they are. And, I, and that's my another hope that I have is that there's an ongoing shareholder activism on behalf of conservatives who have the issue of the bottom line at their disposal and, and, and don't have these corporate responsibility uh, that is, is clearly guided by the cultural left and, and the woke philosophy. So, you know, that's another potential uh, avenue for conservatives down the line to get the attention of these uh, corporate uh, CEOs. And that's really what we're trying to do is get their attention to make sure they're going down the route, the wrong path with where they're headed. Do you think that they can be, even as I ask the question, I, I kind of shrug my shoulders a little bit. Do you think they can be shamed? I mean, one of the most striking things that we're seeing right now is they're doing all this with regard to the Georgia voting law, and they're talking about taking a stand on Texas and uh, various other Republican-controlled states that they don't like. But of course, many of these same companies are shelling out literally tens of millions, hundreds of millions of do dollars to pay for sponsorship for the Beijing win for the Chinese Winter Olympics beginning next year. So they're quite happy to spend money cozying up to the Chinese government, doing what it's doing in Xinjiang province and doing what it's doing in Hong Kong and threatening Taiwan. But they're critical of more than critical. They're, 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 they're condemning Republican uh, controlled states here at home. Is that something, do you think, this double standard that they that they operate? Is that something that maybe conservatives can hone in on to? I do think so. It's totally hypocritical for them to not to look the other way with regard to China. But I also think it's important to look at a board of directors' uh, lack of desire for conflict, for public exposure, and to use that, create conflict in a way that forces these board of directors to say and call it and make these CEOs accountable to say, is this really in our best interest? So they say, finally, Russ, many of these companies will say, well, well, look, hang on. Companies have taken positions in the past. We've taken positions on tax reform and we've taken positions on obviously on regulation and issues like that. And now, you know, a lot of our employees feel strongly about these issues. So we're simply, you know, we're, we're weighing in on these issues because they're important uh, matters to us, to our business, to our employees. They matter to our consumers, too. What, what do you say to that? Well, typically when a corporation weighs in a public policy matter, it actually impacts their bottom line, whether it's the corporate tax rate or some regulation that impacts their ability to do business. And to the extent that that's not the case, and to the extent that there's a perception that they are really just the accountability arms of the Democratic Party, they're going to lose the trust of the American people. They're increasingly losing the trust of the conservative movement uh, to be able to say that this actually impacts them and it's just not virtue signaling for the left. Yeah, it really is just reducing and uh, eliminating the, the room for 
divergent opinions in this country that we're seeing in all walks of life. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Russ Vogt. Thanks for joining me. You bet. Well.